All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about solving equations. The key here to solving equations is you got to keep everything balanced. Unlike this teeter-totter where it's clearly unbalanced, Justin Bieber is so much cooler than these three algebras. I mean, even though Bieber's really not that cool at all, he's still much cooler than these three guys. When we solve equations, we have to keep it nice and balanced. We can't do one thing to the one side and not the other side. Now, in this section, we have an understanding that you know how to solve basic one- and two-step equations. If you struggle with the basic equations, you probably are going to have a lot of uh, struggles on this section. You need to get help. Please get that help as soon as you can. Don't just struggle, struggle, struggle. All right. Let's take a look. Um, so this first one, this is what I would consider one of those basic equations. What we're going to do is we're going to solve it and we're going to justify each step. Now remember a couple of things. First thing, when we solve equations, we want to use GEMDAS. We're going to grouping, right? Exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. All right. When we do this, we're going to undo it. So instead of normally we go this way, we're going to go backwards. We're going to undo GEMDAS. We're unwrapping the present. All right. And when we move things from one side to the other side, we use the multiplicative and additive properties of equality. Okay? All right, so let's take a look here. Um, first thing, I'm going to circle this variable right here, n. So what am I, what is bothering n? I want to get n by itself. What operations and numbers are bothering n? Well, yes, 4 is bothering n. It's a positive 4. That means it's being added. Don't be fooled into thinking because there's a negative sign here. I'm subtracting 4. I am adding 4. What else is happening to n? In fact, let's put it right here, plus 4. What else is happening to n? I'm multiplying this 6. And what kind of 6? It's a negative 6. So honestly, I, I think it's helpful to do this sometimes, especially for students who struggle with solving equations. So now I'm going to undo it. So I have to undo this first thing. The opposite of adding 4 is subtracting 4. So if I do it on one side, I have to do it to the other side. So now we have negative 6n equals negative 38 minus 4 is negative 42. And let's justify that step. What did I do? I used the subtraction property of equality on both sides. Right? I subtracted the same thing from both sides. These, property, these properties are all pretty basic. You know them are. I subtract both sides. It's a subtraction property of equality. Equality is important, yes, because it's an equation. All right, so then I go to my next thing. What's the opposite of multiplying by negative 6? Well, that would be dividing by negative 6. So I have to divide by negative 6 on both sides. That gives me n equals positive 7. What is my reason for that? Well, that is the division property of equality. All right. All right. So let's try another one here. Let's solve these here. I'm going to write GEMDAS down. All right. And I'm going to just tick off stuff. Now, the first thing we have to think about here is this. We have a variable in two places. So the first thing we always have to do before we can just do GEMDAS is we have to simplify. When I simplify this side, I'm not doing the opposite. I only do the opposite when I go from one side to the other. So let's just simplify. I have 5a's minus 3a's, that is 2a. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7 equals negative 19. All right, now we can do our GEMDAS. So what do we have? We multiply by 2, and we have a subtract 7. So remember when I, I undo it, so what is the opposite of subtraction? I'm going to add 7. I'm going to add 7 here. All right, so that gives me negative 19 plus 7 is negative 12, 2a. So what, what is this first step? Let's justify our reasoning. What did I do from here to here? I combined like terms, right? 5a's and 3a's, like terms, 8, negative 8, and 1, like terms. So that's my first justification. What did I do here? I added, so that is the addition property of equality. All right. And what's my last thing? The opposite of multiply is divide. So I'm going to divide by 2. So that gives me a equals negative 6. And that is the division property of equality.
All right. So what I want you to do right now is actually pause this video. All right. And I want you to try number three. I'm going to give you a huge hint. The very first thing I want you to do is use a distributive property. All right, so let's take a look. The first thing I did was a distributive property. So negative 8 times 8, negative 64, negative 16x. Then I distributed 4, and I got 8 minus 32x equals 40. Then I combined like terms. I combined the negative 64 plus 8 and got negative 56. The negative 16 and negative 32 and got negative 48. Now I'm actually solving my equation. I have subtraction and multiplication, so I had to add to the other side got 96, then I divided by negative 48, and I got negative 2, and those were the addition property of equality when I added both sides, and the division property of equality when I divide from both sides. All right, let's check this one out. So sometimes we first have to get all the variables just on one side. So if you check this equation out right here, I have some p's over here, and I got some p's over here. So in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is combine like terms. All right, so negative 4p minus 2p is negative 6p. 5 minus 5 is 0, right, equals 3p minus 8p is negative 5p plus 6. So that's just combining like terms. Now, when I have variables on both sides, I often, uh, kids ask me, which one do I have to move? It absolutely does not matter. The very first rule I look for is this. Is there one side that only has a variable by itself? Yes, yeah, so this side has this alone. Therefore, I don't want to move this because if I move this over there, there's nothing left over here. So I'm actually going to move this. And now this is minus 5p. I'm not, I have this whole thing I have to move. So the opposite of subtracting 5p's is adding 5p's. So I'm going to add 5p's to both sides. So then I have negative p equals 6. Now, I don't have my variable by itself. That's a negative 1, right? We don't write it. So I actually have to divide both sides by negative 1, and we get p equals negative 6. All right, let's try this next one here. So again, I'm going to distribute first. So I have 25 plus 4x equals 15x plus 3. Now, at this point, um, again, it doesn't matter. I go to, I, I try to combine my variables first. So I'm going to move my x's. Does not matter if I move 4x's over here or 15x's over there. Me, personally, I like to move the smaller ones. So the opposite of adding 4x's is subtracting 4x's. So now we have 25 equals 11x plus 3. All right, so the opposite, now I have to get to my variable alone, I have multiplication, I have addition, so I have to undo adding. The opposite of plus 3 is minus 3. If I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other. And I have 11x equals 22. I'm going to divide both sides by 11, and we get x is 2. All right. All right, so then uh, this is kind of going along those lines. Does it matter which step we do first? So what I want you to do, um, I want you to pick. Here's your equation, 3x plus 4 equals 8x minus 16. Just pick one of these, all right? Just pick one of these. So, for example, if you pick start by subtracting 3x from both sides, you're going to subtract 3x from both sides, and then you're going to solve it, all right? Um, if you pick in the middle one, you're going to subtract 4 from both sides. I don't care which one you do first, but I want you to pick one of those three and solve it. And then we're going to solve all of them and see what answer we get and see if it matters what you do first. All right, so pause the video right now. All right, so over here, this first time I subtracted 3x from both sides, I then added 16, and I got 5x equals 20, and then x equaled 4. Over here I subtracted 4 from both sides. I got, notice this, this made this a negative 20, but when I subtracted this x over to here, I got a negative 5x and a negative divided by negative equals a positive 4. This one I added 16 to both sides and again I got 5x equals 20, right? The big key here is this. 
the first thing you you can choose when we have variables on both sides you can choose what you want to start doing the key is you need to pro once you have both your variables on the same side like so right here I, I have all my variables on one side then the choices really kind of run out all right could I have multiplication and I had subtraction could I divide everything by 5 first and then add 16 to it I actually could do that but it will re result in so many fractions and what most kids do is they don't actually do it correctly in fact I've never seen a kid do that correctly that's why I say do GEMDAS and solve backwards alright alright so again I want you to pause the video. I want you to solve all three of these. Be very careful. There's a lot of negatives in here. All right. And then I want you to compare what our solution sets are. All right. Because in fact, we should be writing these not just as this, but we should be writing these in terms of a solution set. So the solution for this, yes, x equals 4, but is the set of 4. And that's how we want you to write these. All right. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to solve these equations, and then I want you to look and compare the solution sets. What do you notice? What's the same? What's different? What's unique? All right? Go for it. All right, so let's take a look. The first one, we distribute, we combine. We got negative 3 minus 3x equals 6x minus 3. I added 3x to both sides. I got 9x, right? And then I added 3, and I got x is 0. So the solution to this is 0. Now, a lot of people, when they get in this, they think x0 doesn't count. I always want you to think of, does 0 not count? It is an element in this solution set. It is absolutely important. There's a huge difference between x is 0 and when we have the empty set, where there are no answers that go in there, right? In fact, we'll get to that in just a second. So over here, we did this, the same thing. We got negative 3 plus 6x equals 6x minus 3. Subtracted these 6x's, though, and look what happens. They cancel out. Now I have no x's. So now the question is, it gets down to this. Is this true? Remember, we, got, we talked about our true-false statements last time. Is negative 3 always equal to negative 3? Well, that is a true statement, isn't it? That means no matter what I put in for x, no matter what, it'll always come out to be the same. So what did we say that was? That was all real numbers, right? Or we could delineate that as all real numbers, okay? Over here, we have a distribution. 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 1 is 3. I subtracted out. Now I have negative 3 equals 3. Ooh, can negative 3 equal 3? No, negative 3 can equal 3. This is false. In fact, this will never work out. There will never be a number that goes in here that I can get out and have it be something. There will be no solution to this one. Okay? And how do we write no solution? That is the empty set. That's how we write that in set notation. So you can see, is there a difference between x being 0 and x being the no solution, huge difference there, isn't there? All right, I want you to pause the video, take a second, and I want you to answer these two questions. How do we know when we're going to have the solution is an empty set, or in other words, it has no solution, and then how will we know the solution set is all real numbers, or, you know, our, our fancy R? This is as close as I could get. All right, so I want you to actually write out complete sentence for me. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, and do that right now. All right, so take a look. Let's see. How do we know when the solution set is empty or has no solution? Well, if you remember, that was negative 3 equaled 3. So how can we do it? Well, the first thing we want to talk about here is the fact that what is not there? We have no variables. So the variables cancel each other out, cancel out on each side, right? And then the number numerical e equation left is false when that is true so example when I have two numbers that are left no variables and they do not equal then we have a no solution so likewise when do we have all real numbers very similar right the variables cancel out 
on each side. But what's the difference here? Instead of having negative 3 equals 3, we had negative 3 equals negative 3, or 7 equals 7. So the numerical equation left will be true. And let's try and, you know, spell numerical right. All right? So we have those two things. You have to be keep your eyes out for those, all right? So I want you to pause the video, try these two things on your own. Ready, set, go. All right, so number one here, I combine like terms. I got 6v minus 10. I subtracted 6v's from both sides. They cancel out. So my variable canceled out. So now I know I either have an all solutions or I have no solution. So negative 10 equals negative 10. That is a true statement. Therefore, it's all real answers, right? All right, number two over here. Let's justify each step. So I'm going to distribute first. My first step is the distributive property. Negative 18 minus 2x equals 4. This is a negative 4 times 4 is negative 16x. Negative 4 times negative 5 is a positive 20. So that's the first one. Uh, I have to combine like terms, right? So I have negative 18 minus 2x equals 4 plus 20 is 24 minus 16x. At this point, we have a lot of choices, okay? I'm going to get my x's together. I'm going to do the opposite of minus 16 is plus 16x. And what I'm doing here, I am adding using the addition property of equality, right? So the addition property of equality gives me 24 equals 18. Negative 2 plus 14 or plus 16 is 14x. Is that right? Yep. So I'm going to subtract 18. Oh, this is a negative 18. So I'm going to add 18 to both sides. That gives me 14x equals 32, 42. All right. Uh, that is the again the addition property of equality. What do we do next? I have multiply, so I'm going to divide both sides by 14, and x equals three. That is the division property of equality. All right. Leave you with some words of wisdom here. Your I can is more important than your IQ. Just remember, there's a lot of struggles in math. It's not the easiest thing. I totally understand that. But if you give up, it's going to negatively impact you. You'll never be successful. If you just keep plugging away, find help. Get help from your teachers. Ask for help. You will be successful. All right? Have a great day. We'll see you next time.